very cold, come on. Welcome to the town of Albero Bello, which tongue ties me every time I try to say it. Albello, but I think I nailed it that time. This beautiful cone head of a building that I'm in is called a Truly, and it is truly very special, but more on that later. We left Sicily, in case you haven't caught that by now, flew from Palermo to the town of Bari, took a bus, just about an hour, Bari to Albero Bello. We're gonna spend just a couple of days here. It's about dinner time. Let's get it on the stove, and then we'll get to what you're here for. To start things off properly Italian, we've got a nice bottle of red from Choo Choo Vineyards, which is a fan favorite winery. We actually went to their tasting room several summers ago now, and we saw this in the grocery store here and thought, yes. Hmm, I've never had a red like this. It's nice, it's light. San Martino, 2021. I need rosemary. Mmm. We require a little bit of rosemary for dinner. And wouldn't you know it, they have a very large rosemary bush. So, Albero Bello is in the Italian region of Puglia, I believe it's pronounced, and they are famous for a specific shape of pasta called orecchiette, which I believe means something like little ears. You can definitely see where that comes from. But I actually cook with this shape back at home all the time because I make this dish all the time. At some point, in our marriage, I came upon this recipe because it is simple, vegetarian, and delicious. I've since shared it with friends who make it regularly. We call it pasta soup. It's basically rosemary, garlic, tomato, pasta, and chickpeas. And we're gonna whip it up for you because we thought, hey, win in Puglia. I will link below the recipe or put it up here somewhere, the official recipe, but I've made it so many times now with my own personal modifications that it's just a suggestion. Most of all, what's a suggestion is the amount of garlic they call for because garlic girls measure garlic with their heart. And that's what we're gonna do here today. So however many cloves feels good to you. If if I can make a tiny complaint about Airbnbs in general, it's not just this one. Like, what is this knife? This is the only knife to cut anything with. It's serrated. First thing, grab a pot, give a little drizzle drizzle of some olive oil. Take about, I usually take how much garlic I felt like that day, take a third of it, pop it in there. And we're just gonna let that sizzle down there for a minute and don't let it start to brown or anything because we're gonna need to add the tomato paste and they'll just finish cooking together. All right, we've plopped in our tomato paste. Oh, hello. You want the tomato paste to stick a little, not a lot, a little to develop that nice flavor. Okay. I have added garlic tomato paste, the chickpeas, the pasta, salt and pepper to the pot. We're just going to bring this to a simmer essentially until the pasta's done. Just cook it until the pasta's done and then it's ready. In the meantime, we're gonna make what I call a finishing oil. We're basically gonna fry up some garlic, rosemary, salt and pepper, and red pepper flakes, and that is gonna drizzle on top. With that, we are gonna begin our house tour. Let's see our truly. While Ashley finishes up dinner, I think the best place to start the tour is really outside in our backyard. And talk a little bit about the construction of a truly and what it really is. The first things you'll notice about Truly are that one, they're white. Two, they have a conical roof made of this gray stone material. And three, they're very small. I like to think of them basically as the Italian tiny home. And the history of Truly are actually quite interesting. Basically, there's a few theories, but the most popular theory is that these buildings were built for essentially like farmhand, and they built the Truly so that Basically, you can stack the limestone without any mortar or anything binding the stones together because the people would be able to quickly disassemble the buildings when the tax man came to collect their local taxes. They would say, oh, I have no house here or home. I don't have to pay these property taxes. And that's pretty much how the Truly got their start. Our Truly has three different domes. The top one, the big one that you see, is where the loft is inside of our Truly, which I'll show you in just a second. Traditionally, the Trulies were just one spherical roof, but this one is more of a house. You cannot disassemble it, and y'all, 
It is a very impressive home with a lot of good details and high quality craftsmanship built in. Welcome to the tippy top cone head of our truly. This is the main bedroom loft area. Very spacious. Every time I'm up here, I feel like I need to hunch over, but actually it's quite tall. It's also very cool up here with all the stone kind of around and everything. Let's head back downstairs and show you the rest. If the loft is too chilly or if you have extra friends staying with you, we have a downstairs bedroom as well. This is the dining room. This here is the living room all in one space. And y'all, one thing that I love about this truly is the tall ceilings. I'm like six feet tall. And so I've got to imagine that these are like nine foot tall ceilings right here. And then it gets like 15 feet out here. This is just another little living space to get you from the main living space out to the back patio. We like to have coffee here. And then over here to my right is pretty much where we store our luggage and everything. But there's a coat rack, the luggage, and there's a little window over here too and like a little storage space. But check these windows out. This thing opens like three different ways. Watch this. That opens so you can let light in, but not cold air or hot air. And then if you shut it again, you can open it up and let the air in. And it's just like really well built. And these are like all the windows throughout. And some of them even open a third way. Ah, this one does too, where you can just have like a vent. All right, on to the bathroom. This over here is where you do your business. This over here is where you clean your business. And then over here we have a shower as well. Nice little sink and vanity area and light, which is good. And then another one of those little windows, come check this out. It's where you vent a little bit if it gets a little too musty inside. Look at people walk by. All right, last thing before we go check on dinner, because I feel like it's probably about to burn is the details, y'all. I just wanna talk about the quality and some of the details here. The floor, which is pretty unique, the floor is heated. And y'all, it's just so nice and warm and it's perfect on a winter day. The other details, I love these little nooks that they have just put in all throughout the Truly where you can set art and all sorts of little details. They're just scattered all throughout and I love them. The other thing too in here are the lights. There's lights set out which really show you kind of the round conical shape of the ceiling and it lights up all the way to the top so you get that atmosphere of being inside one of these truly. Enough about the house, let's go eat. This looks so good. So we have what we call pasta soup and you always want to serve it with some nice fluffy bread because the little finishing oil that we made I just put the rest on the side, dip, dip, very tasty. Mm. Crunchy garlic, so good. I love it. What's cool, y'all, about this dish is the orecchietti is the perfect size to hold one chickpea in the center. It is. Like a little pearl inside a clam or something. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna finish dinner. We'll see y'all in the morning for a day around town. Good evening and welcome back to the beautiful town of Albero Bello. We are out for our passeggiata, our little Italian evening stroll along with the entire town. It's really the time of day to sort of walk around, get some fresh air, see and be seen before we do dinner later on. And the sun is starting to make those beautiful colors in the sky. It's gorgeous, so we thought it'd be the perfect time to kind of show y'all around Albero Bello. There are two main zones that have the, truly, there's a zone that we're in right now where we're actually staying in our Airbnb and it is called Aia Piccolo. And in that zone, a lot of locals actually still live in the Truly. But in the biggest zone here, Brione Monti. It's like the tourist zone. It's the tourist zone. People don't actually live in the Trulys there. There's a lot of shops, restaurants, B &Bs. bars, BMBs, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start in the smaller local one. We're gonna make our way over to the bigger one and show y'all around. days all of a sudden the lights came on everywhere and we hear this like narration basically they have kind of a nativity scene with Christmas lights scattered all throughout the neighborhood with some kind of I assume like a nativity story being told it's in Italian but it's like a very relaxing narrator voice being played all throughout it's so calm and beautiful a little relaxing 
senza fissa dimora e venivano messi sullo stesso piano di briganti e malfattori. Eppure, eppure loro non dubitarono di quel progetto. Abbiamo appena avuto su questo piccolo posto, penso che è un po' di un parco. Abbiamo passato su quel piccolo archway dove l'angel era e abbiamo solo continuato a guardare e c'è questo piccolo parco di tiro con delle vie eccellenti del centro centro e il sole. È così vibrante, come un pinco di hot coral pink with the blue and over on the kind of touristy section of the Trulies the, the little domes are lit up with yellow lights and you can see the symbols on the roofs of them which we'll kind of get into in a little bit but man it's spectacular it's so beautiful we all didn't expect Alberto Bello to have so many Christmas decorations but the tree back there just adds so much good festivity to the occasion throughout the town of Albero Bello are the symbols on some of the roofs and you'll see a lot more of them kind of over in the touristy region the Rione Monti neighborhood anyway we did a little reading trying to figure out what they mean mostly they were for protection to kind of ward off bad or evil spirits and they generally fall into four categories we have Christian symbols which are the most prevalent crosses hearts with crosses, the sun and moon. Then you have pagan symbols. You have ornamental or what some people call grotesque symbols. I read that a lot of the ornamental ones are actually just the family that had the truly made them up. It could be their initials or something like that. Oh, and then magical symbols. I can't believe I forgot. These are my favorite. So some of them kind of look like astrological signs. Some of them just look like dots and lines. These, it looks like maybe we have like a Christian cross and then maybe one of the pagan ones. I think the pagan ones are the ones that use a lot of like dots and lines. I was I'm hoping to see more of the zodiac type ones. Apparently there's one that's like looks like Pisces or different ones, but I haven't really seen those yet. But let's go look around and see what we find. fun revisiting countries that you've been to before because you like notice new things and on this trip to Italy I've noticed these vending machine areas more than I ever have before it kind of reminds me of Japan they'll just be these little nooks where you can get literally anything today's offerings are all kinds of snacks all kinds of booze and as I've noticed is very common some accessories for adults call this machine date night. We have candy and chocolates and then things for later in the evening. Out of the machine on the side street. <laughs> One last stop for the evening is the Belvedere Terraza right next to the Santa Lucia Church. It's a very popular spot to get a view of all the tippy tops of the Truly. If you want daytime views with a lot less people, come around two because the city is very quiet then. Otherwise you're gonna have to come really, really late because it is always hot and there's just wave after wave of people. But it really is an excellent spot to see everything. Whee! Cheers, y'all, I think. Yes, I think that'll round out this day. We were so tempted by the gorgeous wine bars. There's so many cute little wine bars over in that neighborhood. But Jordan and I both had to look at ourselves and say, we have food at home. So came back enjoying the very last spritz out of the fridge and maybe the rest of the wine from yesterday's dinner. And then I'll round up this video. We will see y'all in the